is great that uh, you joined this call. So, and I think that sort of conversation was a bit more helpful for me to direct you to the right steps or because this is kind of a bigger tool and um, I don't want you to get lost inside uh, because there are so many things. But uh, what I will strongly advise you to consider not everything part here, but try to analyze your target audience, like who they are, what is their pain point, what is their problem, and focus on this market research part because what is happening here is uh, you are into very niche segment, into very domain specific segment, right? So there is not much available content out there. You need to really first identify who is your target audience, like who they are, and you need to really get into detail with them. And uh, you can segment, for example, you need not necessarily to have this 10 to 200, like one big category. You can divide companies up to 10 employees. Think of some examples from your email list, right? Who are those people, one to 10? Then take another segment from 10 to 20. Because from my experience can tell you that the problem pain points of one to 10 employees company will be different from 10 to 20 and from 20 to 50. There must be something different that drives them to have this kind of uh, uh, conferencing system. And you know, uh, it can be completely a different choice when you're a small team, you can work with uh, maybe Zoom, but when you're a bigger team, and you have also some systems connected, uh, like suppose you are on Microsoft Azure platform, you are having Teams and SharePoints you're working with, right? Then right. natural choice will become to go with Microsoft Teams because then it's all integrated at one place. But if you are something, a different com company, which is working on Linux system and you are not working with Microsoft, you, you have completely different orientation then uh, obviously you can try something else. You don't need to try uh, Microsoft Teams for that matter, right? So right. you need to not only work with this employee categorization, but also some sort of maybe technology classification. And what you can do is here, you can create here two to three different personas or workspace, I will call them. So when you start with all projects, uh, you can sort of create one okay. workspace, which is for one buyer persona. So when I go to one workspace, basically to deep dive into it. So when I say, who is my target audience niche? So this is saying like in this example, my target audience is B2B SaaS founders and I want to more narrow down. So my target audience are B2B tech SaaS founders, but this is still general, right? And I wanted to go to B2B sales and marketing SaaS founders. So in this uh, particular situation, I think you would start with something at a high level, but you narrow it, narrow it down. And then once you put some initial information, there is, is this insights, which will help you to further refine your ideas and target audience. Shall we work with one example so that it becomes easier for you? We shall we work together and then yes, see what that would be out. great. Okay. You said uh, you call it UCAS. So it's like Unified Conference Assisted Service. Unified Communications Unified as a Service. As a Service. Communications as a Service. And sometimes it's spelled out. So it's C-A-A-S, exactly, just like that. that. There's a bit of a, you know, there's no total unification of the terminology. Some right. people just refer to it as UC or Unified Communications. Sometimes it's UCAS, you know, some people might be searching for a new phone system for their office yeah. and they might refer to it that way. But I'm just going by what a lot of the vendors and providers call it. So I put here like UCAS as a yeah. best name. And then I will attach your domain name. So your uh, website name here. So it's messageimpact.com. Yeah. Like that. Exactly. So there are first few questions. So your target audience are, are these uh, people are uh, 
who make the decision like let's start with that in 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 your uh, space in your niche cro founder who are these people yeah like a cro sometimes usually someone in it maybe you know it manager it director cio sometimes it would be maybe someone in um, procurement right i will start like chief of it and communications and and these are like medium enterprises right they are not a small or are those smes or how do you call them like you're talking about who the decision makers are no the, the the what kind of companies these are like these are startups these are smbs small medium businesses or these are what type of companies that you have been working with so far oh i see type of companies like in my prospects you mean the yeah yeah my customers are they startup um they yeah have- no not necessarily they can be a startup sure but anybody that's got you know 10 plus phone seats right like would need so if you had 10 employees and you had to get a you know phone for each employee so that 10 would be sort of the, the bottom starting right. point for me I, i can't really sell one system because you know most of the time they just they don't sell me one system they want me to sell you know 5 10 plus so somewhere between 10 and 200 i would think or 10 and 100 would probably be a good yeah. good starting I mean, point it's like at this stage we are just narrowing down to a specific target audience so i start with chief of it and communications in in an enterprise i i i want to start from higher then go a bit more more uh, broad okay. then say we, we we further niche is down so concept is called uh, niche down right uh, we are we are going okay. to narrow down so let's say head of uh, procurement in a medium to large company with 20 to 50 employees great um, yes. then let's further narrow it down in, in your opinion when you have interacted with many people can you categorize those people and let's say like if 80% of these people were in health industry or are those people were in the insurance or what kind of people uh, you have worked most in the past specific verticals yeah a specific vertical for example like saas businesses what what kind of businesses are there these yeah financial would be one i know a lot of them in the us are selling to healthcare although i'm not sure i want to focus on that too much let's focus on financial services so let's call it like head of it department of a financial services and so basically that these people can be financial services themselves like could be a hedge fund could be a mutual fund right it could be a bank itself could be uh, anything they are sort of head of it department of a financial services company right. something like that right because as you said before uh, they these people are more in a re- operating in a regulated environment and when they operate in a regulated environment they have to also make sure that all their communications are confidential they the breach of data and mm-hmm. the security of the data is top most priority when they consider these kind of solutions if someone is just uh, selling non financial services non health related services right they can choose to be uh, on zoom or any kind of communication because they don't have to really prove to the regulator that the systems the communications sometimes there are regulatory requirement financial services companies to really strict on those uh, confidential nature of the communication right right so then i will put something here do you know someone from the financial industry uh, and you don't need to tell me the real name but we can take a abstract name so we and then really understand the pain point and problem of this person so we we wanted to say who is this person what is this specific situation this person is 
what problem they have and what they desire. So we'll put like into two, two three statement. You need a name? Just, I don't know, I'll just pick a name, I guess. Just pick a name, let's say John, who is head of IT and communications with Citrus. We take some fictitious name. Services, he need to find a secure, secure and confidential unified communication as a service solution. Uh, I'll, I'll read it out and uh, tell me if it's making sense or not. So, so it's our name, uh, Ideal Prospect, his name is John, who is head of IT and communication with uh, Citrus Financial Services. Uh -huh. uh, he need to find a secure and uh, confidential unified communication as a service solution. Okay. Unified communication service as a solution. And why he wanted to have this? Uh, I already mentioned secure and confidential. So that, that's his desire, right? Uh, we are capturing his desire. So this is J Johan. Uh, he has a certain position. He has certain desire and he needs some result, right? Right. Anything, anything else that you think can be important from your ideal prospect, this uh, Johan? Do you think that this is uh, the right person? You sort of having visualization about this person, Johan? Does it fit into your uh, visualization? Yes, it's one of the things that would definitely fit in there. Other things, I'm just trying to think. Uh, let's say they want to, uh, I don't know how to put it, you know, unify their technologies a little bit better, update their technologies, move away from the on-premise sort of solutions to a more cloud-based solution. Cloud-based cloud -based solution. solution. Uh, can we call it a cloud-based CAS solution? Communication. Yeah. Service CAS. You call yeah. <laughs> Cloud-based CAS. You, yeah, put a U in there in front of the CAS. Yeah. Um, uh, I hope this term is recognizable with uh, these language models. But let's right. uh, let's give it a try, right? We already okay, sort of uh, narrowed it down, and now we have very firm idea about Johan, who is the head of IT and communication with Citrus Financial Services. He need to find a secure and confidential unified communication UCAS solution, and uh, and he wants to move away from an on-premise solution to a cloud-based UCAS. Let's start with okay. this idea and then see how this system can help yeah. us. We wanted to go into deep dive. So when you do this yourself, it will throw you like a quick gains. But you wanted to, in your situation, you wanted to do a deep dive understanding of your target audience because that will really help you to write better emails write better LinkedIn posts, uh, use this uh, whole buyer personal research as micro content in your communications. So we'll start with here. Uh, we have our data okay. here. I'll try to generate some more insights, which we, which can be more valuable in our next step. And it's, it's not necessary that you need to do at one time everything. Just try to fill it slowly take what content is useful, right, for you and use that content already. So your yeah. niche, uh, these are leader who build and deploy and manage internet te technologies for one to 500 employees in industry of finance or services. And uh, these people are looking for content or conference, a leader who needs to build, deploy and maintain internet technology for a small group of employees the work is for person who can install network, set up services, troubleshoot wireless alerts, and who is also responsible for the security of the company's network. See, we get some deep idea here, right? Your target audience 
is someone who is also a bit technical. He is responsible for maintaining and installing network. Uh, this person is uh, also troubleshooting and uh, managing these web services. This is the right right person whom you wanted to advise because maybe procurement staff or head of uh, some IT will also bring this person together with you. I'm I'm so happy that we are already getting into like very deep into this. So something like a blog post idea you could have is five ways to reduce the risk of cyber attack, deep dive into enterprise class encryption, hacks to keep your company safe from device hack hacking. And maybe you can say, okay, this is not something I recognize myself and we can refine this idea. But this is how system will work when you will put these initial ideas, it will give you more deeper ideas. So okay, how can, can I, I interrupt for one second? Yeah. All that stuff that came up on that side under the insight section mm -hmm. is that was all done by the AI based on yes. the information that you provided, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. so, and then on the, le on the left hand side there, that's the define your niche. So I can, so I, assuming I can take multiple different niches right. and play around with them. Right. And do I create a different, um, what's it called, a, a profile for each one? Like how we just started, if, create like right. three, four different workspace. And I create a different workspace. Okay, that was, so that's yeah. what I was gonna ask. Yeah. And so I just create a different workspace. So let's say I wanna target, as an example, I might have a workspace for targeting, you know, companies with 11 to 50 employees, and yeah. I might have another workspace, or right. I might have a workspace that's designed to, you know, focus on uh, office managers that might manage the office, and one that might focus on, uh, you know, a director of IT, mm -hmm. and one that might focus on procurement type of thing. Is that correct? Yeah, so see, for, okay. example, okay. for example, if you have been purely focusing on uh, procurement, head of procurement, and right. try to be as specific, as deep down as possible, so then you will really get more narrow down uh, ideas. And of course, there is a there is kind of uh, this trade-off because these are language models, this is AI, so this is trained on large internet data, more high level you stay, more better quality you get, but more specific you wanted to get in your domain, you get valuable insights, but sometimes also there is a high noise around this. So you need to cut that noise. You, you can filter this. If you don't like stuff or uh, you don't think that this is relevant, you can delete this, you can save this. And then here is in uh, notes section, you will see it again coming as a fine, fine notes or fine text. Okay. I can edit that information on the insight side. Yes. If I edit it, will that information that I changed or edited move over to the next subsections? The information that is here on these questions and answers right. is influencing the next subsection. Right now, okay. these insights. These insights are for you to refine these answers. So okay. the goal of these insights is to make these answer more and more better. I see. Okay. So then I just, if I don't like that, what's on the, if what's in the insights, I can just go in and go, well, that's not exactly, maybe I'll change yeah. the niche yeah. to director of IT from procurement, yeah. that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then I'll review what's on the insight. It'll update the insights, correct? Yeah. It will update the insights. Once I, okay. It'll update the insights. And once I have that, kind of the way I want it for that specific niche. Yeah. Then I go on to the next section. So uh, let's say, suppose uh, we started with this idea, but I don't like this head of procurement, but what I wanted to like replace it, I wanted to say, uh, what did you say? Office manager? Office? Yeah, sure, uh, office manager or director of IT. Office manager, let's say I okay. want to have okay. office manager. So. This is something I got information from here, and then I replace procurement to office manager because I didn't like that idea suggestion. But what will happen? You don't need to save it, and when you regenerate the insight, then you will get more 
relevant insight related to office manager only you see my point so you can refine it until you say okay, okay. i think that's uh, good enough then you just keep it and um, main goal of this insight is to really help you to get this better and better specific to your okay. use case did you hit save or whatever already on that or no not yet i, I okay I, okay this is already i had i have to save this because i made some changes here and uh, this is not saved so when i refresh this this will disappear and i can again generate a new insight which will take into account the office manager that i have now done okay so it'll recreate a whole new insight indeed indeed so okay. let's change this part we meant we put it office manager in a medium to large company and then let's see what happens maybe some like nuances or subtle things will change uh, because it was more pointing towards procurement stuff maybe now it will change something else but let's see so we started seeing like chief information officer chief technology officer is a high level business executive it's just like defining this stuff okay when it says office manager are more often than not tasked with the maintenance and requirement office space and staffing which include everything from it issues to employee relations their responsibilities are day to day operations of company headquarters coordinate activities of manager order stationery blah 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 but see you you have got different ideas here when when you are targeting office managers you need to go through this what are their roles responsibility what keep them busy that way you can personalize your message and this way you can uh, understand different roles that you are going to talk to them right okay yeah that's really uh, helpful right here head of department vertical uh, ideal prospect your ideal prospect is uh, Johan he is the head of IT and communications for a financial services company i think it came from uh, our own uh, writings in new york uh, right. he citrus financial services over 150 employees across various offices in north america and johan has been in this position for 3 years in that time he has uh, relied on on premise solution for voice and video communications now with the growth at the company accelerating we need to find a unified communication as a service solution that can provide secure reliable compliant communication across the company so we got reliable secure and compliant communication and we need to figure out maybe in your uh, country and regulations in us and in canada i'm sure financial services company need to comply with the specific regulations from the authorities to make it compliant right Uh, right. so maybe some kind of element uh, or knowledge that you can share about that can be an idea so you can draw a lot of insights from this and uh, try to get more and more focus on uh, how we want to target these people and i just worked with only one category but there are more of them they are like demographics semantics psychographics niche filter the filter that you are talking about that uh, people from 100 to 200 or uh, they have certain sort of revenue metrics or you can do, you can filter out them on not only on company size but some other ideas like how they how the growth rate has been for them in the industry so there could be some more ideas that you you can try right but moving next then you can put your website name company name role designation important thing is you don't need to fill all these details so let's say your website domain name https it should take actually we already filled right uh, but it is not currently like this Mess- messageimpact.com you yeah. had it right right yeah. so message oh, yeah. impact.com impact. company name is also message impact right yes message impact name of the role or title of the person who could get most value and uh, satisfying so here uh, i just need to uh, put to uh, then i can use fill with ai now what is happening this is using the previous information that we provided to it so their role head of it head of it department their account executives your own role so 
who you are, your own role. Uh, you can call it yourself. Uh, you say technical advisor, right? For UCAS. Yes. Technical, technical advisor. UCAS. So you just need to clean up something because uh, it's building the information and uh, it's going to get more and more better. So people whom you are targeting, head of IT department, they are in the, I'm sure in the uh, range of 37 to 40, right? Or maybe yes, that would, 50. That would be a good guess, yeah. Yeah, or 50, yeah. Sure, that's a better, a little bigger range. Right. It Suggesting some location, is, you can change it. Uh, location can be Canada, so that's fine. These people are not web developer, but they are like uh, technology, IT, IT specialist. They are married, they have 12 years of experience. They could be bachelors or masters. Uh, company size, minimum employee, uh, let's say 20 to start with. We can also say sure. 50 to 50. Their uh, main traffic channel for you is currently your website, messageintech.com, but you can change it if it is LinkedIn or something else. But given this information now, we can generate more insights. So that's the idea. And we can further refine this, right? So that way right. it gives you more and more uh, ideas to work with about your content, about your uh, targeting, about your messaging. Maybe you can use this information to update uh, your website. In the next section, it's also going to give us headlines, subheadlines, uh, keywords that we should use. So it, it should help you in your content creation process, definitely. So, um, of course, uh, it goes into detail about this uh, company, about yourself. It's not necessary. Everything is uh, like sharp and to the point, but uh, it has a lot of insights, which you can again read and uh, improve this information, okay. right? Right. Uh, it says Message Impact is a website where I'm CEO and I also make my company and other sites have employees. Uh, what differentiate us from our competitors? That is important questions. Uh, we are only software which can deliver results and can have capability to work with all productive text, our company, blah, blah, blah. So if I were you, what I will do, I will read this information, but change it in a way which is talking about you. Use the same like format and language and keep it and, and save this information and also refine this information. So at any point of time, you can go back and uh, see and use it. So when you go here back to notes, you will be able to see this again. Like oh, it saves in the notes. Okay. Yeah, oh. it is saved as a notes, and you can uh, of course uh, use this information, refine this information. This is like think about this as several AI agents. Or like you, when you uh, make a deck or when you make an email, you need to open one PDF, another PDF another notebook, right? Think this, right. that these are AI agents. Whenever you need some argument, uh, title, headline, anything that information, this is just like bringing to you these AI agents. And then they're working and helping you to uh, create messaging, right? You have okay. to think, think like that. <laughs> so that, that helps uh, uh, in understanding this, uh, this way of uh, deep so diving to buyer persona. Okay, so I can save multiple notes in there, I guess. Yeah, it's attached to the workspace. So we have created okay. this workspace, UCAS, and this okay. uh, this whole exercise we are dedicating to that workspace. Now the next okay. step would have been uh, semantics. So just give me one topic you think is most important for your buyer persona. Shall we again use UCAS? You cast yeah, let's stick with that. Digital transformation or something like that. I wanted to start some. You have to think about here what will be your main content or topic. You know that will be fo you will be focusing about, and maybe we can also say here the whole 
thing like unified I will think one more topic here uh, and uh, what could be that one is like uh, you said in the beginning that these people wanted to move from on premise to cloud based cloud based solution right right so cloud audio video cloud based conferencing system let's see what it suggests unified communication cloud based messaging solutions cloud based unified messaging yeah. unified communication as a service attention yes head of it head yeah. of it department of financial services company looking for a secure and confidential unified communication as a service solution this should be our mm -hmm. headline on the website okay <laughs> And sub headline could be obtaining unified communication as a service solution. It's not, again, I said, this is starting, right? And then you can save this and based on this, we can generate insights. That's our goal, right? To start with something which makes sense, steer it in the right direction and get it more better and better. So when I, based on this information, I will generate insights. And if I find something more valuable, then I will put it here in the in this section, and then I will save it. Next time when I generate, it will impact uh, our results. So you're looking to explore a cloud-based audio video conferencing system, conferencing system which is designed for you to connect remotely and see them, hear them, and share the perfect room to develop ideas, discuss strategies, and brainstorm. The benefit of cloud-based audio video conference is that the service is fully managed by our team who are ready to share their experience and intelligence. Now, at this stage, what you can do, uh, maybe you can also try to bring some weakness and strength of some of the tools that you have worked with, be it uh, microservices team, teams, uh, Microsoft Teams, or Zoom, or GoToWebinar. Try to think in the, those areas and try to influence this system more, which give you more like more and more accurate idea to work with. But okay. if you start working, playing with around it, with it, I'm sure you will get more and more better understanding of your topic, niche, subject, and you can treat them as this like micro content. So you can take some part of it, club it, and then create another content. Now, in this call, what I have not talked about is why we are doing this. That's important, right? Uh, how it can help us. So here is content automation. Uh, these are sales copywriting. And I'm assuming that most of the time you will be struggling to create email services or email copy. Yeah. And that will, a... once we have done this research, uh, this will help you to create a lot of uh, these kind of emails. So nurture sequence or email, you need to type one or two parameters and then it will create out of the box sequences of email for you. If you go back to the previous button there again, just click on that. Yeah. Yeah, right there. What, so what's that? I don't, that has any trouble understanding which one to select there, like right. select the category. What? Yeah. So we're trying to sort of make it more, uh, understandable but you can see from some of the headings like if you wanted to create short videos then use this if you wanted to create headlines then headline if you wanted to create big long form sales letter i think in your case you wanted to create long form one or two sales letter and use those sales letter in the different parts of your funnel or website or maybe right. you wanted to create some ebook or something but you you know what I mean by sales letter. Sales letter is right. like, yeah. very focused on the sales and those argument and it's a very structured approach to persuade your target audience. If you are looking for webinars or emails or wanted to create landing page copies or there's also something like related to cold calls, we're trying to make it more compact. But I think in your case, when you're doing this outbound prospecting emails, and uh, the sales letter and landing page could be quite useful because then uh, you can create 
buyer persona specific emails. Are Other these services though, like Sales Samurai and Email Expresso? Are there different services you're linked in with or are they just general names to these are tell me? These are category and then these are the templates inside those categories. So when you start as uh, it's, it's like a template, right? A template is a blueprint oh, I see. and then how it works is like when I select one template, let's say I select this template content authority, then it is again as a main topic that we have worked with. It is connected with our niche, the market research that we did. It's chief of staff, office manager. That's what we uh, we fill in all details, right? Mm -hmm. The idea, idea of that market research is to pro map all this content to these uh, questions that we are ask, asking here. So you, again, you will put one or two answers to the questions, but then you see there are like maybe 30, 40, 50 questions. And mm -hmm. these questions are stitched together with the bigger content. So it combines and it gives you final output, which uh, is more like a sales letter or a landing page. Okay. You need to try it out. Why I spent a lot of time in first section was that you can get a lot of value already out if you just focus on here and with few categories and try with two, three different workspace. One is for office manager. One is for maybe procurement head. One is for the IT and services and maybe focus on the financial services only. And then sort of build your uh, content in a way which you can slightly tweak and also attach it to another. Because it's very hard to talk healthcare people, also financial services, because they have their different need, right. pain point, and you you will have very hard time creating email and messages. So focus on one vertical and deep dive into it. Try to understand their problem, pain point, more not from just demographics point of view, but more from the psychographics point of view, understanding because in the end uh, your message will resonate when you will emotionally connect with them right in the in the sales or in marketing persuasion is uh, the technique and this technique is uh, triggered by having an emotional connection with your target audience okay so just a couple of quick questions so yeah. this where we started off with the market research and the, mm -hmm. the step one and we worked on the niche right? That's what we started with there, right? Yeah. That one. How important it is that I fill all those in first? It depends on uh, how far you wanted to go. And uh, sometimes if you're targeting more broader audience, then maybe you can stay up to like three or five categories. It's like five or six percent. Okay. But I would suggest don't worry about it. Just focus on like three, four categories. Think about what is most important in your research that you really need because this template is designed in a way which is fitting to all use cases, right? And of course, uh, we need some time to design different use cases. But for now, you can think of that you have a big cake on the table, but you wanted to only eat little part where you feel happy and satisfied, right? Okay. Don't, don't worry about that you need to do everything here. Just try... Uh, little, little pieces and see uh, how you can make them work for you. That will be my advice. Okay. So when I fill out this niche under that workspace, uh, let's say we, we did there today, yeah. all the stuff that if I go to, then if I go over to the automation content, mm -hmm. content automation, because I'm in that workspace, everything that I created from based on those niches will end up in that. Yes. How I write will be based on that content automation. Exactly. So I need to go through that for every, yeah, for every workspace that I've created. Yeah. And because you want okay. to try, you want to try three, four different buyer persona, but then right. don't, don't go into depth. First try to stay on a higher level and choose one, which you think make more sense for you. And then okay. you can sort of generalize that, right? Because I'm sure the moment you go from financial services to insurance or something else, right? It will be quite different in the arguments. 
You can also start, right. by the way, here, uh, going into understanding a bit more uh, search trends, uh, how people are searching. So people are searching like uh, these are the searches, UCAS meaning UCAS provider, UCAS. I don't know what would be that UCAS versus CCAS. Yeah, C that's con call center as a service. Okay. So UCAS, it's, you know, you know it's, they're almost the same thing, but slightly different, but yes. I sell both those in there. It's a great question. A lot of people get confused because one's more defined for call centers and one's more defined for Maybe you want to use. target some blogs which answer these kind of questions. UCAS Magic Quadrant, UCAS. Great idea, yes. UCAS Wipe, UCAS versus CPAS. That, and there are some questions here, so you can take a look like what is UCAS? What is UCAS services? What is UCAS solution? What does UCAS stand for? What is UCAS platform? What is Cisco UCAS is also popular? Yeah. Uh, Avaya Cisco. UCAS, Cisco Avaya mm -hmm. looks like our major providers. Yeah, they're all in the game now. Everyone's in the, right. all the big providers from the Microsoft to everybody's in the, the whole sort of UCAS market now. How to sell UCAS, how does UCAS work, how to market UCAS. So you got some kind of ideas with this. This is more like search intent discovery. And here, if you wanted to uh, work with more Google data and see what other people, competitors are doing. The thing is, you need to have two things to work with this. One is big, bit more detective, detective like being understanding what your competitors right. are doing and at the same time try to understand the psychology and the behavior of the people whom you are going to talk and then we are leveraging the power of ai to help us so these three things we are doing in this uh, in this setup trying to be more detective in uh, understanding going deep into it spying detective and then uh, try to understand uh, psychographic semantics of our target audience, and then leveraging the power of uh, AI. Here you can also get a lot of ideas, UCAS benefit, UCAS questions, and once you click it, you are of course directed to uh, Google or uh, search engine, but then mm -hmm. you can find some interesting ideas that you have not thought. It gives you sort of on top of the search a system to deep dive into ideas which you might have not come across before so this is also a good starting point so it's a combination of search uh, data google data and then ai together and then market spy. like kind of three dimension like be, try to spy into the market right. uh, competitors uh, leverage mm -hmm. ai and use semantic psychographic profiling of your target audience. And I think okay. that will give you solid foundation for your content development, for messaging, for targeting people. So then the main areas I should be focusing on for now, for now is sort of the market research niche and then the content automation, Yes. right? Yes. yes. And then all this other stuff in here, everything from you know, FAQs and elephants and labels and all that type of stuff. I should go through all that as well. Not necessary at this stage. When you build your case studies, when you have testimonials, you can okay put in here, they will be useful later. But you are testing your market, you are trying to understand at this stage and you are figuring out optimizing your idea, like you know, researching and stay at this level on, on high level maybe important is to touch this uh, niche current environment promise activities but you don't need to go deep into the niche because it's quite extensive so you can only focus on the first four categories niche okay uh, and your demographics semantics and psychographics one two three four actually now we are launching our entry level plan and we are sort of uh, locking all this because many people are uh, getting confused they get lost into it and so we wanted to make sure that we have a uh, high level approach which work with everyone this kind of entry level plan 
and then when you become more and more deeper into it you can go deeper so i like the idea and if i thought if it could help me and if i put the work into it but right. sometimes it's just and so what you've given me today is a really good starting point for me to right. kind of get me starting and i think that can be the um challenge is there's like you say there's so much there uh for everyone so yeah. it, you just sometimes don't know where to start right. how much do i fill in how much don't i fill in you know right. and what's my end result going to be on this after i spend all my time on this right you know is always the challenge for right entrepreneurs and right first goal is now to understand your target audience and not not like you have some ideas so you have office manager you have it head of department and at this stage you are not very sure which one to focus more so this tool can help you to deep dive into some ideas and then of course uh, you have to stay focused so you need to choose one or two like your target audience and then use this uh, information for the content creation Uh, yeah. whatever time you will spend on creating these insights right it won't be waste because you will get so much ideas while you while you are working here you, you will pick up something here and post it on your linkedin or put it on a side note as a uh, as a email message so the time you will spend here is will be valuable because you will be getting so much insights and uh, it will give you further direction Okay and then it'll help me write the articles the content creation part yes. will help me actual yeah. take that information from the from the niche and write that help me write that blog post right so what i showed you here was more sales related content yes. email sales letter and this is here in ai content writer where you can start creating sales related uh, sorry the blog post so let's say here i want us to start you cast for put you cast providers how's that that's a common search term i'll get is right people are looking for the providers mm -hmm. and they don't know who they all are and when you do search you get a whole bunch of them and then yeah you don't know get a blog post about providers right Let's that's fine yeah you some i would like to use the blog tool then it will give you some outline of the tool outline of the blog so again uh, what is your main topic of interest is the uh, providers uh, to in which topic so, okay this um, is like cloud solutions right sure yeah uh, all these yuka service as is like saas but kind of cloud cloud phone systems cloud solutions sure yeah cloud solutions what problem does uh, this blog solve for readers so when when uh, will uh, when reader will uh, read this helps choosing a yuka provider mhm mm uh, helps find the correct ucast providers something like that right call to action you would like to have like just uh, generally what you tell people to call you back sign up or in, in yeah whatever i put them all on there usually but a uh, phone fill out a form i would just say learn more or something okay yeah because we can always refine it it's just like we wanted to get some outline first and again this content written in with the help of the niche stuff we yeah it has an yeah, okay. element of uh, our research into it so this is my outline of the blog outline is my blog is about ucas provider in the market now they are changing the business world for better the chief of it and communications for an enterprise it need in need to know the benefits of yuka solution providers for their company this thing the chief of it and communication it came from our research market right i see it, yeah it is kind of influencing this it seems like all major players are making a move to offer yuka solution to customers around the world 
the UC provider is mostly focusing on small to medium sized businesses catering solution that allow them affordably to do things like VIP services, posted PBX, posted. Then it's just kind of giving you an outline, the body and the conclusion, right? But this is not uh, end of this. This is just the starting of this. What we are going to do, we have this top ranking articles. Uh, we have their headlines. We have their paragraphs. Now, if I were you, what I will start, doing is extending this blog so and how i will extend this blog is like creating questions so what will happen it, it goes to your competitor it convert them into questions and then it also generate answers i will show it in a moment uh, it's good way to develop your blog post i see that's okay that pulls from other pro other websites there a lot of them are from the same website these are like uh, paragraphs and then this is another website is another their blog post and uh, these are filtered in a way which is relevant to this topic right and uh, it's like these are all the headlines paragraphs topic questions i'll, I'll just walk in a moment i just wanted to see why i'm not getting questions so what happened here, see, for example, this text is converted into questions. So what is the important choice between UCAS and on-premise UC? Let's say this right. is the question that you wanted to address. Now, right. when I press generate answer, this is not repeating other competitor's content. It is based on our market research. And it is creating an right. like unified communication services, cloud-based system, UCAS can benefit or do this and this. So you generate a unique answer to this question. And uh, of course, we are improving this approach, but you see the approach here is take the competitor content, generate question out of it, then answer it via in a way which we connect with our market research. And then this answers, you can uh, you can fit it here, stitch it together as a blog item. So it will help you to create quite in-depth blog. You see, what does the uh, hybrid deployment okay. model mean? What does UC and UCAS provider uh, allow them? So it's going into in-depth questions and uh, you can- I would move those over to the other section? Yeah, you can just copy, okay. for example, if I wanted to- Oh, I see the copy icon there. Yeah. You can uh, you copy this. Uh, it's copied. And now pressing here in my keyboard. Right. Uh, command V on Mac. Then, right. And then you can stitch it together and create sort of in-depth blog. The difference with other tool and this is like you uh, are in control of the things, which question you right. want to address, which question you don't want to address. It's not just out of the blue generating a lot of text, then you again have to work, cut it down. But here you can systematically build your blog post based on this outline, right? Of course, it has other tools like all the paragraphs that you just have seen. These are the different topics that we should be covering in our blog features, phone, software. Don't think them as a keyword, but they are topics. Topics means okay. like broader topic. If there are some Cura questions also, it pulled. So who is, who is the best UCAS provider? Now we can try to answer it with AI, but I don't think AI has the answer for it. Maybe Google has the answer for it. <laughs> but right. I don't know if you know, is it good answer? Like Intercol is the one of the best UCAS provider. Do you know what is Intercol? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they're a pretty big player in the market. A little bit new on the newer side, but mm -hmm. I don't know. A, that's a pretty broad statement to say they're best though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So I wouldn't call them the best, but. I'm very familiar with Intercall. You see how this system is working. It's pulling yeah. questions from uh, different sources, right? And then giving you a sort of answer. A debate, some says vendor are like, uh, are killing service providers slowly. Why Why we say UCAS can only help them grow? What do you think? Debate between vendors and provider vary by reason. 
varies by region because there are different rules for CROs in the region. Uh, I'm sure you are getting this more than me. <laughs> in some region, right. companies can use their own PBX while uh, right. US is a COI carrier of immunity market where only the largest providers are allowed to ship and sell equipment. Uh, so you see how depth we are going here in the discussions, right? Right, yeah. And Most of that's pretty good. It makes some of it makes sense and some of it just needs a little editing. Right. But yeah, it's pretty good. You you see back your market research here. Uh, we only work with three to three things. Um, your answers are still influenced by three, but more category you work, uh, more influence uh, okay. will come to the answers and the quality will improve. So I hope that was quite useful. Uh, it's a no, it was awesome. Yeah, it was really helpful. That gave me a good start. Um, I'll play around with it. We are running an affiliate program. So please join uh, affiliate and then uh, that might be the good idea to try uh, right with your network uh, who are struggling with communication service, communication or content development. Okay, it might, it might actually, you know, I've been thinking, I mean, I write a lot of, if I'm writing stuff quite often, it's about my industry, mm -hmm. but I need to, you know, write just more general business articles too. Right. Because that attracts, because my niche is so tiny. Right. You know, right. it's pretty mm -hmm. refined. So if I bring in other people and talk about, um, you know, just other business related stuff, Right. It may, you know, just just bringing in traffic in other ways, as long as it's business related, because I am looking for business owners, you know, business founders, uh, some of the key players in there. Are, they're quite often the key decision makers that uh, that lay out the roadmap for where the company is going to go and what it's going to do. What sometimes can happen is like uh, you have a network of people. Just you create some channel of communication. Let's say you start a Facebook group or a, a LinkedIn group or something that you are familiar with, right? And then you start a side topic, which is related to this founder, people coach them, guide them, try to discuss general business problems and create some stories, interesting stories and idea. Then these people will come there and then you can also introduce them later in a in a way which make you comfortable and also them comfortable about what right. you are working as your core business right maybe this is not for this but also your hobby right uh, you have something right. else to do which make you happy and uh, this could be running a community right of uh, people yeah. doing something different it can be completely different thing than yukas it can be just some uh, hobby uh, on a summer vacation, uh, going to some place and then uh, how these people might enjoy who are busy uh, entrepreneurs. <laughs> right. Could be anything in interesting that you like to do, right? And still you can use this tool to generate those content ideas. So I hope uh, you're enjoying your rest of the day there and, and let's stay in touch for the affiliate program. Okay, have a great day ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Harish. I appreciate your time.